All right, I think we're on. Good morning. If anybody wants to start popping in, they can start popping in. Otherwise, they will not. So let's see here. Come on, people. Nobody wants to wake up on Saturday mornings. And I know that a bunch of you are awake because I have seen that you are online already. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? I am sitting there and trying to still figure out all of this awesome stuff. But um, so uh, last weekend I made pancakes. Uh, something that I've done for a long, long time. If you want to see that, you can probably go back and find that one. Uh, today, I am making biscuits. And again, these are very simple. Betty Crocker. Unlike the pancake recipe, though, this one I do straight from Betty Crocker. Um, it's a pretty straightforward recipe. It's easy to do. It's one of those things that right now, while we are all dealing with what we're dealing with, you're not going to be able to go to the store and find biscuits, probably. Or it's like with pancakes, you're not going to be able to go and find Bisquick because everybody's bought up all that stuff. And Krusty's is all gone and everything else is all gone. If you can get flour, if you can get baking powder, if you can get some of the other stuff that's out there, you can take that stuff and you can throw it together. It's just in this new day and age, while everybody is buying up everything in the store, you can just get the basics and make stuff from there. I have so many friends who have made more bread that they can care uh, I've had other people who are just trying to do everything and like, people starting to get into pickling. And I think that's awesome. And just like some of the other stuff in your kitchen and a lot of skills that you can build up that helps us all get through what we're going through right now, because I don't know about you, but it's not been fun here. So, uh, at least right now, nobody I know personally has COVID. However, I also know of a number of people who have lost people due to COVID. Uh, just yesterday, a kid I went to high school with, uh, his mom passed away in New York. Uh, I've got a very good friend of mine from also from New York who has lost several members of his acting family. Uh, there's a lot of bad things going on and this next few weeks is gonna get worse. So I'm trying to do what I can to help my own mental health and the mental health of others by trying to just do some of this stuff. So I'll stop talking and I'll start cooking. And since more people are popping on, I'm gonna go ahead and remind you again. This is from the Betty Crocker cookbook. This is just go to your, any uh, used bookstore in your area, you're gonna find one of these. The digital stuff online, sometimes they try to go for trendy stuff, sometimes they don't. Uh, I see everybody is popping on and saying, hey, how are you doing? Um, so anyway, this is the baking powder biscuits recipe from there. And it is pretty straightforward. I make this every few weeks. And since you're gonna be going to the store and not finding biscuits on the shelf, this is the way to do it. And so, uh, the first thing you need to do, I am gonna put in my two cups of all-purpose flour. And I am very partial to wheat Montana flour, partially because of the amount of time that we spent living in Bozeman, we used to drive past Wheat, Montana all the time. We'd stop in at Three Forks and get some baked goodies. I also have in here one tablespoon of sugar. I have three teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, baking powder is one of those things, if you don't have it, you may not be able to find it in stores right now because people are getting stupid. If you can't find the baking powder or you don't have it, Look in your cupboards to see if you have baking soda and cream of tartar. Because you can take baking soda and cream of tartar, mix those together in equal amounts, and volume for volume, that is baking powder. So that's what that is. So, a tablespoon of sugar, three teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna put that in. And I am going to start mixing that around just to get that mixed in. I am then going to add half a cup of my, oh, let's see here, half a cup of my shortening. You can use butter for this. I've used butter before. It's not quite the same. I'm going to go ahead and 
all this clanking around. All right, so half a cup of shortening. This is why I'm not on the Food Network. Half a cup of shortening in there. If anybody has any questions or anything going on, I want to hear how everybody is doing and see what y'all got going on. Because I know some of us are dealing with it better than others. Some of us are finding our calm in the storm. And I know that for myself, it has been an interesting couple of weeks. So right now, I just put that half cup of shortening into my mixture of flour. And I am going to start cutting that in. Pastry blenders, by the way, very good tool. You can use it on so many things. I use the pastry blender if I'm uh, stewing tomatoes and I need them mashed up for uh, tomato sauce. I use it for anything else where I need to just kind of make sure stuff's mixed in together. So, getting the pastry blender going until everything kind of gets mixed in and uh, as a trick on any of the fats that you use, if you're using uh, shortening, if you're using butter or whatever, make sure it's cold. That means if it's cold when it goes in, that means that the fat ends up kind of just staying together a little bit better so that when it bakes, it acts a little bit differently when it cooks. All right. And I'm right about the point where I normally turn on the oven so i'm turning my oven on now that i'm peeking around the corner here i'm going to turn the oven on 450 degrees and that's going to start warming up all right so i added in flour i'm gonna have a little bit of coffee and the next step I need to add some milk Recipe calls for three quarters cup milk. I am going to, uh, I usually end up doing this using a full measuring cup and I'll fill it about three quarters cup because normally that's not quite enough because the whole idea here is you put in your three quarters cup milk, you mix it all up, you uh, try to make sure you, like, you, that it's pulling away from the sides. If the dough is not pulling away from the sides, if the flour is not uh, getting all dissolved into the mixture, then you need to add just a little bit more milk. So that's uh, about three quarters cup. I mean, some some baking you want to be very very specific as to the what's and the hows and the how much because you're dealing with chemistry. But for a lot of this, I am going through and trying to mix this stuff up. See that little bit of milk that I had was not quite enough because stuff is not wanting to come together. So I'm going to add just a little bit more milk. And if you're one of those people I see lurking in here, go ahead and uh, say hey, uh, who you are, where you're at, because some of the times my phone doesn't show who you guys are or where you are. Uh, I always want to hear what your survival stories are going on right now. Because I know a lot of us are in different places, doing a lot of different things. I know some places are on lockdown. I know uh, my friends in Montana are going to hit lockdown this evening at midnight. Uh, we're down here in Arkansas, so we've not been touched quite so much. But I know that in Arkansas, I am guessing, I have not heard anything official, I am guessing we're probably going to get locked down uh, middle of next week. And I think we are all on lockdown about a month and a half too late. Um, I have a lot of personal opinions regarding the actions of different people in government and elsewhere, but I do believe that uh, we're finally starting to get on the right direction. Um, unfortunately, due to the inaction, uh, I've been paying too much attention to all of the math that's involved here. Hey, how are you doing, Brandon? And I am 
expecting this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. I know that right now there's probably, even though they're only reporting, what, 100 and some thousand cases, I'm fully expecting that there's over 300,000 cases in the United States right now, and that's just based off of yesterday's death toll. But that's not why we're here. We're here to learn how to make biscuits. And it's one of those things that if you're just joining in, you can jump on in a bit and learn a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and lower the camera here a little bit because I'm going to scooch over. There we go. So I'm going to be over here and for your flour that you keep extra, one of the best things you can do, take a spoon you don't like, bend it in half, that way you can drop it right into your canister. Alright. Yeah, a lot of places are finally going into lockdown. I think they should have gone into lockdown well before what they're doing right now. Hey, Sarah. Alright. So, here I go. This is my dough ball. I have... Let me get this milk put back up. Partially so you can see a little bit better. So I've got the dough ball going and I have floured my work surface and in that I am going to take this dough ball, I'm going to just mash it out with my hand, I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to mash it out, I'm going to fold it over. You ever had those biscuits and like they all just kind of fall apart because there's like, it feels almost like there's layers in there? This is how they do that. They take the dough, roll it out, and then they end up folding it. It's almost kind of like making a Damascus steel, how they hammer it out and fold it. So I'm pretty happy with where that's at. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start rolling this out and you'll feel it's a little bit plastic and how it wants to move and I'm going to roll this out to about a half an inch. If you ever need a guide for a half an inch, everybody the last joint on your pinky, that's about one inch, so half of that. It's kind of a weird thing. Almost every adult, that's how big their pinky is. So I'm going to finish rolling this out and then I'm going to start cutting what I need to cut. I have this handy dandy set of biscuit cutters, four sizes, so I can get like nice little, now they dropped that one, nice little cute one, medium size, all the way up to full size. If you don't have the biscuit cutters, this stuff is too thick for most cookie cutters, so you can also use something like a glass that's about this size, and you can take that, drop it right on in. But I'm going to go ahead and start cutting biscuits and find a spot and then just start and just push down. Don't You don't have to try to corkscrew it or curl it or turn it or anything like that. Just push straight down into the dough and then I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of flour. Put that on my cooking sheet. And I'm going to start arranging these on here. And as I start arranging them on there, you just put them on there as, as close as you can get them. And once you get done with that first batch, you take it. And then you start working it back in together and so you get your dough ball back. So, hope everybody is having a good time. I think the next time I do this, it'll probably be in the evening, depending on what I want to make and depending on anything. But I'm happy people are popping in and taking a look. And so I'm getting my dough ball back into shape. I 
I don't need to fold it over anymore because it's pretty well taken care of. So I am going to continue and get that out to about half an inch. And this is the part where you start to get all kinds of fun because your dough ends up really just kind of getting fewer and fewer opportunities to cut biscuits. I got nine out of that first roll. I got three out of the second roll. And I'll probably get one, maybe two out of this one. And your final biscuit is going to end up being just hand formed and it never turns out quite so well just because of the nature of it. So one biscuit out of that. And this will be a hand formed biscuit probably. And then I'll uh, go ahead and throw it into the oven. So I will go ahead and put these in the oven and then I'll share a picture later on of what the biscuits look like because otherwise you just throw these into a 450 oven for 10 minutes. And like I said, this last biscuit ends up being hand formed just because there's not enough to go into a cutter. So I'm gonna take a look and we are almost up to the 450 degrees for me to throw the stuff on. Hello, Ken. I believe uh, you're Jeff's brother, if I remember right. But I'm glad to see everybody in. Uh, we are uh, so far doing well and we're safe in Arkansas. Uh, there are some cases. Hey, Taylor. Uh, there's stuff going on, but uh, Arkansas is gonna start seeing their big numbers this next couple of weeks. Uh, it's just starting to get to the point where we need to do it. And unfortunately, there's not enough people taking this seriously uh, here in Fort Smith or across the nation. Uh, really, honestly, if you're not social distancing, if you're not limiting your uh, exposure to other people, you're doing it wrong. Uh, there are a ton of people right now who are carrying it around and don't even know it. Uh, there's probably twice to three times as many people in the U.S. right now carrying as what the estimates are. Uh, and this is based off of work that I've done, work that other people have done, looking at the numbers. And we really want to uh, try to minimize what this happens. And there are too many people I've seen who think it's still a plot. They still think it's some sort of a hoax. They still think it's some sort of political nonsense, which is why uh, all of the people who have gotten it so far, it's a whole lot of uh, dead people around the world to make it political nonsense, uh, especially now that I'm starting to, like I said, I don't know anybody personally who has this, but I know a number of people who have lost loved ones. Uh, a good friend of mine from high school I saw yesterday, he lost his mom. And it's one of those things that a lot of us are going to lose people we know. And so we really need to know. Okay, so uh, Brandon up in Montana just said 121 and one death. What that means, is, and I'm not sure if that's one death for the state or one death in total. If it's one death, if you have one death in a population, that means that there were at least 100 people with that two weeks ago because it takes about 14 days typically to progress from getting it to dying. That 14 days during that time, the infection rate is a doubling of every three to four days. Over that 14 days, that's going to be doubling four, well, three to four times at least, if not five times. And so that means if one person died today, that means that two weeks ago, you have maybe a hundred people uh, who had coronavirus. Of those hundred people, that's going to double every three to four days, which means that goes from a hundred to two hundred to four hundred to eight hundred to sixteen hundred. That's four doubles. So that means right now, if you have one death and there's only a hundred and twenty-one cases being reported, that means you very likely have fifteen hundred cases that aren't being reported. There are people with symptoms or without symptoms, walking around, transmitting it. So that means that if you have 1,600 people, 
if you have 14 days from today, Montana's going to have 16 people dying, at least. And if that's if we, then the lockdown that they're going to have today, that's, that's going to stop. Like, for example, in Montana, they're locking down at midnight tonight. That means that from this point, the numbers of the infection rate should stay at that level. That doesn't mean this has gone away. That means that this is going to continue to move. Um, I'm going to go ahead since the oven beeped. I'm going to throw this in. Would help if I put it in the right oven. One second. Put the timer on for. I'm gonna put this in for. It's supposed to be 10, 10 minutes, eleven minutes, twelve minutes. Um, I put it in for eleven just because I just want to make sure. Also, if you use an air bake pan for something like this, the air bake pan is not my preference. I mean, I can understand why you would use an airbag pan, and I use an airbag pan for a number of different things. But specifically for biscuits, if you use like a pizza pizza pan or some other, like a cookie sheet or something like that, that is not airbag, that does not have that gap in there, what that means is you're actually going to cook the bottom. Oh, that death was an 80-year-old guy, but it's quite probable that the next one is going to be some guy in his 40s with... Uh, high blood pressure or with some sort of other cardiovascular issue. Uh, there's there's a lot of people trying to make this sound like this is just going to kill off old people. There's a ton of people around the country who have no underlying medical issues who are my age or younger who are dying from this. And when I have somebody in the house with high blood pressure, I don't want it. If I have people around the country who have just the slightest issue of COPD uh, it with uh, any sort of lung issue, with any sort of uh, pneumothorax issues uh, relating to uh, cardio or your, oh, Heidi's here, she's in the house, but uh, she does not go on camera. Um, I don't know if I can pay her enough. So the, but I'm just really wanting to make sure, and that's kind of one of the things why I've been as loud as I have been on Facebook and almost to the point of annoying people. Uh, I had one person uh, in front of me, a guy I, I really like and respect the guy professionally, but he has uh, this weird belief that all of this stuff is a socialist plot and that the failings of the world's medical communities to deal with this is more related to their socialized medicine systems. And he believes that socialism is, that if we do any amount of socialism in the United States, we're gonna turn into Venezuela. And that's nonsense. Uh, there are socialized medical systems everywhere that you can look at how Korea responded and Korea's numbers are doing amazing. You look at how Italy responded or Spain and England and they, their governments reacted poorly. They, their numbers are not doing well at all. Uh, but then you look at what we did and we just completely jumped the shark by not doing a thing. We needed to start doing separation two months ago. We needed to start doing, uh, ordering ventilators and going into emergency mode two months ago. Uh, the report that there's a hundred thousand ventilators that will be produced over the next hundred days when we've got New York needs 30 to 40,000 in the next couple of weeks. We have other states around the country are going to be needing ventilators on a high rate. If we would have done taken the steps two months ago, then we would have uh, 60,000, 70,000 ventilators now going out to different places. But we didn't, and because of that lack of action, people are going to die. Um, I didn't mean to take that dark turn there, but uh, that's one of the reasons why this has been so important to me. I pay too much attention to math, I pay too much attention to the numbers, but that is one of the ways that I wrap my head around problems like this. I go in and I take a look at the surveys, the studies, the medical science, the numbers behind it, the statistics behind it, and looking at the curves and me understanding a problem better gives me less anxiety towards the problem. And so it 
it helps. That's how I find my calm. Some people, they find their calm by sitting and just watching the news all day and just wanting to learn more and more and more just to hear people and to see people talking about what these are going on. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can fix this, I mean, but there's a lot of different ways. And the big thing I'm looking at right now is just wanting to find a way for us to be dealing well with what we have. And I don't know if I want to talk for another six minutes to wait for these to come out. Um, so I think what, since I have gone through this and done this, I am going to, uh, when I get done, I'm going to post, oh, you're jobless because of it. Yeah, that's, that happens. Uh, I am very, very fortunate in that, uh, we are in a position that I am still working. Uh, the museum still has, uh, we have very limited staff anyway. Uh, our staff is still doing their jobs from home. I'm still going into the building until we go on lockdown, which I'm expecting Arkansas to be in lockdown next week. Uh, I'm thinking Wednesday, Thursday. I would not be surprised if it's before that. Uh, there are, uh, Heidi is fortunate because she's getting paid, uh, the Fort Smith Public Library System is paying all their employees for the hours they should be working, uh, which I think that's amazing. Um, it's unfortunate how many people have lost their jobs. Uh, it's one of those things that we will have to deal with and we are going to be making some major changes as a country, I believe, in light of the results of this. Uh, as we go forward as a country, we're going to be making some major changes and we have to make some major changes. And I think this, unfortunately, a lot of Americans need to be slapped in the face to change their personal beliefs and their personal uh, feelings about how we act as a society and how we act as a country and what we need to do. And I think this is going to be that slap in the face. Uh, it's unfortunate how many people still think that this is some sort of a plot and it's not as important as it is, but we're going to start seeing a lot more people losing their lives. Uh, if we don't see enough action, I'm, I'm fully expecting we're going to see more than a hundred and that more than a hundred thousand dead Americans by the time this gets done. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. My numbers so far though, have been either at or below what's actually happened. So, uh, I am very concerned by this, uh, especially if this is something that ends up continuing on. Uh, the main thing we can all do right now is if you think you have symptoms, stay home, stay away from everybody else. If you go out into public, try not to touch anything. If you do touch stuff, make sure you get cleaned up. Make sure that if you come home, you wash your hands. Make sure that you take care of what needs to be taken care of. Don't go out and hoard all the toilet paper. Don't go out and buy six of something when two of something will get you through the next two or two weeks or so. Make sure you have what you need. A lot of us can do a lot more than we think we can with what we have. That said, just make sure you're out there helping people. Make sure that you are a voice. Show somebody your face. Make sure that you talk to the people you haven't talked to for a while because there might be somebody out there who just needs to see a face. It just needs to have some contact because right now they've been stuck at home watching Netflix for the last four or five days and they have no contact. And that's not a great thing. Uh, I know some introverts have been living for this, but uh, some of us have also needed to have other people uh, in their lives. So let's see here. We're at, I did not intend to continue this to the point where I'm going to be going through. No, oh, Drew Smith said something uh, elsewhere, but. Um, I did not mean to go on for 10 minutes while all this stuff is cooking. So I'm going to start cleaning up just a little bit while this finishes up in the oven. I'm going to a little bit of extra milk. I'll show the holler to the dog to have that. He'll love that. In the meantime, how's everything else going on? See a few more people have popped in right now. Hello, good morning. About ready to see the biscuits. I've got uh, two minutes on the clock. Just setting some stuff in the sink. Taking up the biscuit cutter I dropped earlier. 
starting to put some stuff back up in the cabinet. I to clean up my mess because, well, we are a household. But uh, I am more than happy to help you. Hey, Carl. Hope everybody gets a chance to have a good day. And uh, I am, like, like I said, I'm waiting right now for the biscuits to come out of the oven. Um, other than that, uh, Carl, you just missed my dry tribe about uh, numbers and coronavirus and how the numbers are much worse than people think they are. So you have been paying attention to a lot of the stuff I've been saying online between myself, and Justin, and some other people. So I know that you recognize where I'm coming from on that. And I know that you agree with me a lot on where I'm coming from on that. Uh, all I know is this is about 50-50 chance between whether or not I was going to be drinking coffee this morning or a beer. It is only 10 a.m., but it's afternoon somewhere. But uh, if anybody wants to pop anything, I'm more than happy. And I'm about ready to, about to pull everything. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get that over here. There's the mess for you. Throw my soap container in. There we are. All right, you ready to see some biscuits come out? I've got eight seconds. The biscuits will be coming out. Two and one. And timer and oven and biscuits. There we go. There's the biscuits. I'm gonna set those on the cookie sheet. I'm gonna grab a phone and allow you to see up close. So let me get a little bit better light on there. There we go. So that's the biscuits. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back up here. That was maybe 10 minutes of prep. That was, uh, there we go. Maybe 10 minutes of prep, 10, 11 minutes in the uh, oven. And I've got, uh, what is that? A dozen biscuits now, plus one, baker's dozen. And so, I mean, I don't care if you want them with butter and jam, if you want them, I usually end up turning these into uh, bacon, egg and cheese biscuits. I mean, there's a, a lot, that's a whole separate video on its own. Um, so we end up, uh, we do this, I do this regularly just because I know that getting biscuits is well, one, it's especially hard during this time frame. Two, the biscuits that you get in a tube are not the best biscuits. I know they're light and they're fluffy and they're wonderful, but they're not good for you. I've got six ingredients, six ingredients, six ingredients in this as opposed to all the other stuff because that stuff has to stay refrigerated for a long time and not go bad. And I hear the popper. Hey, Wellington. You want to see Wellington? Hey, Wellington. Wellington just came by to say hi. Hello. So, anyway, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and give you... There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I just accidentally killed my phone. So anyway, um, I just wanted to finish up, say, hey, thanks for stopping in. And I look forward to any comments anybody might have. Here's the last shot of the biscuits. Holler if you need anything. And if anybody knows anything that they want to see done and in the way of a recipe, give me a shout. And I will entertain some things. I know somebody last week, I think it was Kathy, uh, my friend Kathy, uh, asked for strawberry uh, shortcake? No. For a couple of reasons. One, strawberry shortcake is kind of a pain to make. Uh, two, I am not really a big fan of strawberry shortcake. How does that make sound? Um, so if you know something that you can think of, uh, if you've had some of my cooking before, uh, think about something. I've got uh, a lot of stuff in my wheelhouse. I would be more than happy to throw something together. I will talk to you all later. And you guys take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay separate. And uh, remember, we all have a phone. We all have the internet. We can talk to each other. Talk to the people you need to talk to.
because as some friends of mine found out this last week, they may not always be here. So on that bright note, you guys have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, get back at it.